sure most of you have heard that theme song before. Did some of you get shivers hearing it? Did you feel like you needed to look over your shoulder? Like there might be a shark sitting right behind you? Maybe your heart rate increased just a little bit? The truth is, sharks aren't mindless people eaters, but rather magnificent, misunderstood creatures, vital to the ocean's vulnerable ecosystems. Not all sharks are created equal either. Did you know, out of the nearly 500 species, only three are considered dangerous to humans? Those species are bull sharks, which you can tell by their name, are a little aggressive, great white sharks, who like to hang around Cape Cod, and tiger sharks. Tiger sharks have one of the most diverse diets of all shark species. They eat everything, even other tiger sharks. The Florida Museum of Natural History tracks the number of shark bites. And in a 2024 published report, they shared that in a given year, the total number of shark bites was only 13. That same year, the total number of human bites in New York City was 1,857. You are more likely to be bitten by a New Yorker than you are by a shark. Today, I'm going to share with you why we need to rethink our shark misconceptions. Instead of predators looking to chomp on a human, sharks are more like environmental guardians, helping save us from a climate disaster. But first, I thought we could start out with a little shark quiz to test your knowledge. I believe in you, you can do it. Question one, true or false? You are more likely to die from a vending machine falling on top of you than you are from a shark attack. Nice job, the correct answer is true. Surprisingly, you do have a higher chance of perishing while trying to buy a bag of chips than you are from a shark attack. Question two, how many bones does a shark have? Let's hear it, 20, 30? Nice job, the correct answer is zero. Sharks are cartilaginous fish. The only part of the shark that can fossilize is their teeth, since they're encased in enamel. Fun fact, there's a study at Princeton University that chemically analyzed the nitrogen isotope measurements in fossilized megalodon teeth. They use these measurements to try and determine what megalodons may have eaten, providing a piece to the ancient food chain puzzle. Question three, true or false? Sharks are older than trees by 50,000 years? The correct answer is false. <laughs> Sharks are older than trees by 50 million years. Sharks have been on Earth about 400 million years, whereas trees have only been here a mere 350 million. True story. When I was eight years old, my family visited Chatham Harbor on Cape Cod. It was super early in the morning, and my mom wanted to get pictures of my brother, sister, and I at sunrise. As my mom was snapping photos, I saw a man walking along the dock. He had a cooler in one hand and a computer tucked under his other arm. I immediately recognized him. It was Dr. Greg Skomel. I took off as if I was a runner in a 100-yard dash. My mom had no idea who the man was and stood stunned by the speed of my departure. I was, and still am, an avid watcher of Shark Week, and Dr. Skomel's work is some of the most fascinating on the show. Once I reached him with all my eight-year-old fan, shark girl enthusiasm, I peppered him with questions. He was both generous and impressed. But my big moment as a future ichthyologist wouldn't come till two years later when Dr. Jody Rummer, marine biologist based at James Cook University, visited the New England Aquarium. I did my first shark dissection, and I was hooked. That dissection experience with Dr. Rummer taught me 
how much our choices as humans are threatening sharks and quite literally changing our oceans forever. Dr. Rummer and her team are engaged in research on how environmental conditions are impacting shark nurseries on the coral reefs around Australia. Baby sharks, and no, we will not sing the song, <laughs> face all kinds of challenges as environmental conditions on the reefs deteriorate. For example, baby epaulette sharks have found their own adaptation. The water where they live is hot, shallow, and doesn't have a lot of oxygen. So they use their fins to walk from tide pool to tide pool. This fin walking trait allows the sharks access to more oxygenated water and more places to look for food. Dr. Rummer and her team are using epaulette sharks as models to see how other shark species may adapt to climate change warming the ocean temperatures. If you're afraid of sharks now, just imagine even more of them walking around on land. <laughs> Science is about order. And in many ways, sharks are about order too. They have a much needed presence and are pivotal to preventing catastrophic changes in our oceans. Many people know that trees exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen in the air. And by doing this, they play a pivotal role in helping ward off a climate crisis. Typically, people have no idea that if sharks disappeared, it would cause a trophic cascade, an ecological phenomenon that can occur when a top predator is removed from the food chain. As apex predators, sharks are the underappreciated vacuum cleaners of the oceans. They eat thousands and thousands of dead and diseased fish every year, keeping our oceans clean. Without sharks, a trophic cascade stands as a looming threat to my generation. Let me describe for you a micro-trophic cascade example that impacts many of you. By show of hands, how many of you like clam chowder? Well, if sharks disappear, we'll likely not have one of our favorite New England food staples. Sharks help monitor the ray population in the Gulf of Maine. As the shark population decreases due to overfishing, the ray population increases. The rays drain the clam supplies, which is a disastrous reality for small town clam shacks. No clams means no clam chowder. It's that simple. And by the way, I just took a practice SAT test and there was a question so similar to this. Even College Board is aware of this crisis. <laughs> Sharks are essential to our ocean's many ecosystems. Another one of the services they provide is monitoring seagrass consumption. Sharks love a sea turtle snack, and by simply doing their job as apex predators, they help prevent the overconsumption of seagrass. I'm sure you can guess how they do that. Yep, sorry to all the turtle lovers out there, but sharks do have to eat a turtle sometimes. It's necessary to maintain harmony in the food chain. Seagrass sucks carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and stores it. Keeping the carbon inside the seagrass prevents this greenhouse gas from being emitted into our atmosphere in excessive amounts. By snacking on sea turtles, sharks are performing an essential duty for our oceans. They're acting as balance keepers and keeping our atmosphere from becoming too hot. Sharks are also friendly transporters. Shallow ocean water often lacks the nutrients needed to fertilize the coral. And sharks, specifically their poop, contains the goods. Lots of sharks like to eat their meal and then go for a swim around the reef where they poop. Their poop helps the coral thrive and grow. With healthy coral reefs, the organisms that live in the reef are happy, which in turn keeps the environment happy. I believe if a shark could speak, she'd have a lot of secrets to share. Scientists have only mapped out 20% of our world's oceans, and there's still so much to learn, including unknown species, and maybe even more types of sharks. 
I imagine a shark might share how unexplored ocean parts are vital to her existence. These possibilities are what makes studying sharks so fascinating to me, knowing there are still so many mysteries waiting to be discovered. If some of you visited Janess Beach in Rye, New Hampshire last summer, I'm sure you heard about a visitor we had named Anne Bonnie. Anne is a great white shark who stopped by on June 26th at exactly 5.32 a.m. Anne swam up to the beach, said good morning to the locals, <laughs> and then headed on her way up the coast of Maine. I know this because I got a ping on my Osearch shark app. <laughs> Crazy enough, a few weeks later, my family and I went on a college visit in Brunswick, Maine, and Anne was there too. <laughs> I mean, if sharks are following me around, I think it means something, right? <laughs> Anne was doing what sharks do, swimming, eating, and helping our oceans have balance. We need her. In the time it took me to stand here on this red dot, about 1,830 sharks have already been killed. Humans are absolutely the greatest threat to sharks. And honestly, most sharks just want to cruise around the oceans and help us out, I promise. Healthy shark populations means lessening our chances of a climate disaster. I hope I've shared something with you today that gave you pause. Maybe it was a picture that gave you shivers, or a fact you would never considered. I have one last thing to ask before we end. Help me create a shiver effect. A shiver is a group of sharks. And I think we could all show some shark appreciation. After all, they have survived at least four mass extinction events over their 400 million years and are right now facing extinction due to human activity. Shark in sign language looks like this, with your hand on top of your head like a dorsal fin. Let's see it, everybody. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of sharks out there. We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> Thank you.